Hello everyone and welcome back to Jimmy Talks Jira. As a part of the Atlassian Access miniseries, I completely forgot about including a walkthrough tutorial on enabling and enforcing SSO SAML single sign-on. I felt that you guys deserved better, so instead of tacking this on to the end of the series, I've decided to do it as a bonus episode on this week. Without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I'll be demonstrating this in Microsoft Azure. I have previous experience with that, so it's the one that I'm most comfortable showing you. I highly recommend checking out the documentation links I'll have in the description. There are full walkthrough guides that Atlassian provides that are very detailed in all the steps you need to take for any of the other third-party identity providers. So we're gonna start by going to the uh, Azure portal, portal.azure.com. Out of scope for this video, I'm not going to be showing you how to set up a subscription or actually creating Azure AD. Uh, that is just outside of my comfort zone to give my best practices on. I'm also running on free trials, so there's a lot of limited functionality uh, in what I can do compared to a full paid subscription. All right, so from the uh, Azure Portal homepage, we're going to click on the Azure Active Directory tile. And then from here, we're going to go to Enterprise Applications. We're going to click on the new application. Now, by default in the feature apps, uh, Atlassian Cloud should show up. If it's not here, uh, you can just start typing Atlassian in the search bar and you should get uh, Atlassian Cloud showing up. So we'll click on that tile and you can change the name of this. I recommend just leaving it at the default value and then we'll click the Create button. Now you notice that it's adding the Azure Cloud or the Atlassian Cloud application up above. So we're just gonna give it a few seconds for it to complete that process. And once it has completed, it will bring us to the app, the Atlassian Cloud app configuration page. Um, while I'm waiting for this to happen, um, I will point out that, um, oh, there we go. You know what? I won't point anything else out. We'll just dive right into this. So um, what we want to go to is the single sign-on settings, and we're gonna click on that Get Started button. We're gonna click on the SAML button, uh, since we're doing SAML single sign-on. And the first thing that we're going to wanna do is we wanna change this basic SAML configuration, and we're gonna click the Edit button. Under the Add Identifier, we're gonna click that link, and we are going to put in the link to our Atlassian Cloud site. Um, so for me, it is uh, Jimmy Talks Jira dot Atlassian. Yeah, Atlassian uh, dot net. We're going to click the default checkbox and then we are going to click the save button there. OK, and once that is saved, you will see that now it has uh, filled in some of these other things because we've given it a basic configuration. Now you have the option of doing this now or doing it later. Um, what we're going to need though is we're gonna need some sign-on settings from here. We're gonna need some from our Atlassian subscription and we're gonna be passing them back and forth to enable the single sign-on uh, configuration. I'm gonna start by going back to our organization page and we're going to go to security and then to SAML single sign-on. And we're gonna click the add SAML configuration and this is the page we want to be on. And now we're going to grab some uh, configuration settings from our Azure portal. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come down to uh, this setup at Lasting Cloud and expand this configuration URLs. And we're going to grab this Azure AD identifier first. And we're going to copy that to the clipboard. And we're going to put that into our identity provider identity ID. You can see I've already done this a couple times. And what we want to just make sure of is that we actually have the right ID that we are pulling um, so that we don't have the wrong information set. Then we're going to grab this logon URL and we're going to copy that to the clipboard and we're going to put that into the identity provider SSO URL. Uh, once again, just make sure that you have the right uh, information there. And then the last piece we need is this uh, certificate base 64. So we're going to click the download on that. On a Windows machine, you're likely going to get uh, a warning that this could harm your computer. I find this ironic that it's coming from Microsoft. 
we're going to click the keep button just so that we uh, download that file. And then in probably like your downloads folder, you're going to have an Atlassian cloud.cer file. We want to actually open that with a text editor, something like notepad. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the entire contents of that file. Um, you're not seeing me do that, but I am doing that on another screen. And what we're going to do is bring that back over to our admin page. And in this public uh, X509 certificate field, we're going to paste everything. So even this begin and end certificate, we want to bring it all in. And then we're going to click the save configuration button. Now you'll notice that this page changes the moment we have that done in that we now have this SP uh, identity, sorry, SP entity ID and an SP assertion consumer service URL. So we need to take these values and plop them back into our Azure portal. So we're going to start by copying this SP entity ID and we actually need to go back up to our basic configuration and edit it again. And we're going to add a new identifier and we're going to add in um, that SP entity ID. We're going to make it the new default. And then before we save that, we're going to come back and we're going to grab this SP assertion consumer service URL. And we are going to add that as a new reply URL. And we're going to make that one the default as well. And then we're going to save those settings. Once those settings are saved, we're almost done. The last thing we need to do is we need to go to our authentication policies. And if you remember from the enabling two factor authentication, if we don't have an authentication policy set up for this, we're going to need to configure one. Uh, since I have left ourselves with our default policy that Atlassian Access provides us, we will create a new policy. I like using uh, a policy name that makes sense. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Enforce SSO. And we're going to add that policy. Now, unlike the previous one where we're enabling two-step verification, this time we are going to click the checkbox for Enforce Single Sign-On. I'd like to also point out at this time, you'll notice that the two-step verification and password requirements are now things that we can't set. They are now set by our identity provider. So once you enforce single sign-on, you are now going to use your identity provider, such as Azure AD, uh, to determine what your password strength is going to be and whether you have two-factor authentication enabled or not. Uh, so we're going to update that policy. And now that the policy is updated, much like we did with our enabling SSO, we can add our member to that policy. Just like that. And, you know, it's going to uh, finish uh, enabling that. Um, I can't really show that because I am not comfortable showing you full logins with a two factor authentication uh, setup. But that is all you need to do as far as setting up SSO and then applying that to uh, specific users. So if we come back to our authentication policies, you will now see that we have one member in a single sign-on enforced policy. That's all there is for setting up SSO. I hope you found this bonus episode informative and helpful, and please tune in next week when we will actually cover user provisioning within Atlassian Access. Keep in mind that Customer Love Month is still going strong in the Atlassian community. There will be a link in the description to the main aggregated post for all the activities that are going on, so do check that out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel, and please comment below if there's anything you would like me to cover in the future. Thanks for stopping by.